Hey, First Wednesday, I am so glad that you are with us either online or in person at our South Tampa location. I know God's done amazing things already. We've taken communion together, we've prayed together, we've worshiped together, and now we're gonna experience an incredible word from God for your life. Let me just give one plug before we get into the message. If you're there tonight or watching tonight, maybe God is putting on your heart right now for you to lead a radiant group. This is a way for us to stay connected during a season where so many people are disconnected. We're doing virtual and in-person groups, and you can go to our group training this weekend. It's happening on Sunday night um, virtually, so we want you there. So there's information below, there's information online, so make sure you do that. And I really, really believe that we're gonna have thousands of people connected in groups this fall, learning so much about Jesus and growing deep in their faith and deep in their relationships with each other. Well, tonight, we have a huge honor honor of having Pastor David Steele bring the word. He is a spiritual son that's been in part of my life for years and years and years. I got to see him as part of the youth group that I was in and he raised up, I mean raised up and doing incredible ministry. Now he's one of our executive pastors over all of our experiences, which you see on a Sunday is the product of David's incredible gifting, but he doesn't just lead worship. He's not just creative. He is also an incredible preacher of God's word. And I know he's got a message for you tonight. So right there in South Tampa, stand to your feet. Those watching online, come on, go wild and crazy for Pastor David Steele. What's up, Radiant Church? Oh, come on, let's give Jesus some praise tonight. Woo! You can be seated, you can be seated. Bam, do you mind flowing with me a little bit just for a second here? Who is excited to be at First Wednesday tonight? Come on. It is going to be an incredible night, an incredible night. Man, I am so pumped to be able to speak to all of you. I wanna take a second again, I know Pastor Kenton did this already, but all of our people that are watching online, Radiant Line, we love you guys. We're so thankful that you're here, joining with us, wherever you're watching from. Thank you so much for joining with us tonight. And then I have to do something. I have to give honor to where honor is due. And that is to our amazing lead pastors, Pastor Aaron and Katie Burke. Oh my gosh, come on. They're worthy of it. Come on, let's give them some praise. Let's give them some honor tonight. Aren't they the best of the best? Pastor Aaron, Katie, we love you guys so much. Thank you so much for being an incredible pastor, an incredible mentor, an incredible friend in my life. You know, in first Timothy 5 verse 17 it talks about how those who lead well are worthy of double honor especially those with who do well with the preaching and the teaching and not only does pastor Aaron lead stinking well when it comes to radiant church but if last Sunday proved anything it's that that, that guy can preach the house down so pastor Aaron once again we honor you we love you guys thank you so much for this opportunity and then uh, for those that don't know me, my name is David. I serve as our executive pastor. And so he, Pastor Aaron kind of said it, our experience department. And you're like, what does that mean? So really all that is, is our worship, creative and production teams. And I get the honor to be able to serve and lead with those guys. And man, some of these guys are behind cameras tonight. They're in the back production booth right now, serving faithfully. They're on this stage here. Uh, our creative teams, what look like some kind of like iRobot gadget walking around here taking video. That's our creative team. They do some of the most amazing stuff. It's the greatest joy to be able to lead them. And none of that would be possible uh, without my beautiful, amazing wife, Alicia Steele. She was up here leading worship so stinking well. And she is just the, the light of my life. I love her so much. I, she's the secret sauce of David Steele. I would not be up here uh, I didn't say Big Mac sauce, I said secret sauce. So y'all, some of you judging me already, it's a, it's a loose shirt. So uh, she's the secret sauce of David Steele and I'm just so thankful for you, Alicia, and I love you and I, I appreciate you so much. So who came expecting God to do something amazing tonight? Oh, come on, let me hear you. Who came believing God for a word tonight that he's gonna move and change people's lives? Man, in the middle of worship, I leaned over to Pastor Bobby and I was like, man, we got some Pentecostals in the room tonight. We got some people that are ready to, to have church tonight. It's gonna be a good night. So I'm gonna be uh, reading from the book of Daniel and we can, Ben, you can take it down just a little bit, just kind of play softly behind me. And I'm gonna be reading from the, from the book of Daniel in chapter three. And to give a little backstory and context of, of what's actually happening here in this moment, some of you are very familiar with this story. It's the story of, of three guys by the name of Shadrach, 
Meshach, and Abednego. And I, I'd like to encourage you if, you, if you're watching online or if you're here in the room tonight, take open that phone, get that app, that Radiant Church app. I've got some notes on there for you. I'd love for you to follow along with me. But we find ourselves in Daniel chapter 3, verse 13. And to give a little backstory, this is happening in the 6th century B.C. The people of Israel have been conquered by the Babylonians. And there's this king by the, king of, the name of King Nebuchadnezzar. And what he does is he actually takes from the, the people of Israel a couple of different guys, people of, from, from the descent of nobility, some guys who are good leaders, who are well prepared, who are strong. And the plan was to take these guys and to ingrain them in Babylonian culture, to take them and to force them to learn the Babylonian ways to use as a, as a middleman between the Babylonians and the people of Israel. And so we find ourselves in this moment with these guys by the name of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who are in a, an interesting season where they're really being forced and pressured to go against some things that they really don't believe. And so what we do is we find ourselves in that King Nebuchadnezzar has actually set up this golden idol, this golden statue of himself. And he says, hey, listen, when the music plays, I need you guys to bow and to worship this idol. And Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego say, hey, listen, we can't do that. We're sorry, we can't do that. He says, listen, if you don't do that, you're gonna be thrown into a fiery furnace. And let's check out here in, in, in chapter three. It says, furious with rage, Nebuchadnezzar summoned Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. So these men were brought before the king. And Nebuchadnezzar said to them, is it true, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, that you do not serve my gods or worship the image of gold that I have set before you? Now, when you hear the sound of the horn, the flute, the zither, the lyre, the harp, the pipe, and all kinds of music, you guys thought radiant worship was pretty intense. These guys are another level. When you hear these things and you bow, you'll be good. But if you do not, you'll be thrown immediately into a blazing furnace. Then what God will be able to rescue you from my hand? Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego replied to him in one of the most boss statements in all of the Bible. King Nebuchadnezzar, we do not need to defend ourselves before you in this matter. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us from it. He will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if, let me hear you say, even if. Even if he does not, we want you to know your majesty that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold that you have set up. The title of my sermon tonight is, it's getting hot in here. It's getting hot in here. Now, you don't have to worry, we're not gonna play Nelly. I don't have a bandaid on my face, we're good. But I believe God has a word for you tonight. Let's pray. God, I thank you so much for your word. Lord, I thank you so much that you're here moving tonight. God, I ask that you would have your way Lord, would you touch and anoint every single word that I say tonight. Lord, let it pierce the hearts and minds of those who are listening tonight. Let everything that's David Steele fall to the ground. Let everything that's you touch every single person. We thank you for it in advance. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody says amen, amen, amen. Thank you so much. Can you give it up for this band tonight? Come on. Aren't they the best of the best? It's good. So... To give you a little context about me, I, for those of you that don't know me, I, I'm a guy who's a bit extreme, and, and within those extreme tendencies, I, there's a few things that really annoy me. There's a few things that really bug me, okay? I'm going to be a little bit vulnerable and transparent with you tonight. So within one of those things that really annoy me is things that, things that don't live up to the hype. Does anybody else hate that? Does anybody else can't stand when things live up to the hype of what you thought it was going to be? You know what I'm talking about? You know, one of those things where, like, everybody's talking about it. Everybody's going, man, you've got to try this. You've got to do this. Otherwise, you're missing out completely. Let me give you a few examples here tonight. Um, some things that are overhyped and really just do not deliver, okay? First one is TikTok, right? <laughs> right? Am I right? It's really not that great, guys. It's like, it's a bad, it's like a bunch of... It's a bunch of random people doing bad lip singings of random different things and weird dance moves. And some of our staff are insane culprits of this. Like, I, I just want to say, like, I didn't call out any names. I didn't call out any names. I just, it's not, it's not worth the hype. How about, how about this one? The Popeye's chicken sandwich. It's not, it didn't live up to the hype. It didn't live up to the hype. 
I'm sorry. The devil is a liar. You know that, Papa, nothing can stand up to the Lord's chicken and Chick-fil-A. Come on now. You already know. You already know. How about this one? This one might get me in a little trouble. Uh, weddings. Weddings are completely... How about more specifically my wedding? <laughs> um, it didn't... It didn't... I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hey, listen, it, online, please don't judge me. Listen, it, it just didn't live up to the height of what I thought it was going to be. And, and listen, hear me. We're talking about the wedding day, okay? So, like, with the wedding day, it just... It was expensive, the food didn't taste as good as I thought it was going to. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, I've been waiting 20 years for this. It didn't last as long as I thought it was going to. Like, we're talking about the wedding day, not the wedding night. Wedding day. Wedding day, all right? It's good. It didn't, it didn't last. Like, it just wasn't, it wasn't what I thought it was going to be. It's, it's true. It wasn't, the wedding wasn't what I thought it was going to be. And, and I, I love my amazing wife. The wedding was beautiful. I'm just saying it was a little overhyped. You know, weddings are in general are a little overhyped. How about, how about this one? Like, how about New Year's? Do I have any New Year's people in here? How about this one? New Year's 2020? Was that a bit overhyped? <laughs> Am I the only one? It was, it was a little bit overhyped. I remember I had like all of these goals all of these plans written out for 2020. I was like, man, this is gonna be my year. How many sermons did we watch online? It was like 2020 vision for what God is going to do in 2020. You're gonna see more clearly. All, man, all I'm seeing is more COVID and more masks. That's all I'm seeing in 2020. It's like, this is, it didn't plan out to be what I thought it was going to be. I, I was kind of looking online and I kind of found some funny memes about what what I thought 2020 was gonna be versus the reality of what 20, we got a couple of pictures up here, like what we thought travel plans were gonna be like in 2020 versus the reality of 2020 was gonna be like. How about this next one? What we thought 2020 was gonna be like versus the reality of what 2020 was actually ended up being. Consequently, that's all, every time I go to the gym, that's what I think it's gonna look like and then I come out looking like that, so. It's not worth the hype. I wonder sometimes, especially in this season of 2020, if some of us are thinking that about our relationship with God. I wonder in this season if we're sitting there going, man, I, 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 thought, I thought following Jesus would have more than this. I thought in the midst of every circumstance, in the midst of this struggle, I thought for sure since I'm following Jesus, there would be more to this thing than this because this is, this is getting hard. This is getting challenging. I mean, I, I remember even the last couple of weeks just talking with a couple of different people and different couples and different things, and it's almost getting depressing in this season. Yeah. 2020 is hard. People are furloughed. People are losing loved ones. There's all these different things. I remember sitting at home just a, a, a couple of days ago, and I, anybody else get the news notifications on your app, on your phone when it kind of pulls up? And, Literally in one address, it said, COVID-19 kills hundreds of thousands of people. Um, riots are in the street. If, 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 uh, if whoever wins the political you know, sides or whatever, like if this person wins, it's all how hell's going to break, break loose. And if this person wins, then the end of the world is coming. And then, and then there's like a hurricane hitting. And it's just like, man, I thought this year was going to be better than this. I'm following Jesus, and, and I thought, man, this isn't living up to what I thought it was going to be. I wonder if Meshach, Shadrach, and Meshach, and Abednego felt the same way. They had been serving God. They had, been, they had known the God that had the stories had been told about all throughout Israeli history, and they, they were from the, the lineage of the tribe of Judah. They, they'd heard all that God had done and had delivered the people of Israel through, through, through the waters and from Egypt and from all of these different things. And, and then they're faced in this situation going, man, if we don't go against what we believe, we're going to die. What do, what do we do? And I, I feel like sometimes, you know, even... Tonight, we, we sing songs, and 
and you know, the best is yet to come. We sing songs like, I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And I believe I'll see you do it again. I just did that so I could show these other pastors that they can't do that right there. That's like, truthfully, that's all that was for. Hey, listen, Pastor Aaron's got biceps, but he doesn't have vocal cords like that. So it's good. It's all right. It's good. But it's so true. Is it not true we sing things like the best is yet to come? I've seen you move. You move the mountains. And some of us tonight, we're standing in front of a mountain that looks like a marriage that's falling apart. Some of us are standing in front of a furnace that looks like your kids have left the faith. You've lost a loved one, and you're going, man, I'm seeing these things, and I thought following Jesus had more to this. I, I want to encourage you tonight that you serve a God who's not dead. He has not left you. You are not forsaken. The Lord sent me here tonight with a word for somebody to let you know that he is here and moving on your behalf. Though it may be getting hot in here, that the furnace may be burning I'm here to tell you that we serve a God who is victorious, who the best is yet to come. And I think in a similar way, when it comes to this thing, I think in today's culture, we're, we have some of our own idols that we are being forced to either bow or to face persecution, rejection. I think for some of us, it's what, politics? For some of us, it's the idol of fear. The idol of depression, the idol of hopelessness, this, these things that the enemy would have us bow to and give up our beliefs on. But just because it's getting hot, I want to encourage you, don't give in. The Lord is moving and working today. He's not dead. He is alive. And so looking at the, the story in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, I think there's three things that can help us. That as the heat starts to rise in this season, can help us stay firm and stay bold in the midst of the season. Amen? Amen? All right, you got your notes with me? Let me hear you say, follow. yeah, I'm following you? Follow. All right, good, here we go. All right, so for us to stay faithful in the fire, there's going to be a couple of things that we're going to have to do. Looking at the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, there's a few things we're going to have to do. The first one is preparation. The first thing is preparation. I'm actually, like, really bad at preparation, if I could be honest with you. Some of you guys, Pastor Bobby here is actually one of the best at this. So the moment that the pandemic started happening, he turned his entire backyard into a bunker. It was absolutely amazing. I don't know how he did it, but he was able to, like, live off of, like, the rats in the backyard. I mean, he went full on beast mode and made it happen. And some people are great at preparing. I, I just am not a good preparer. Okay, so let me give you an example here. So I, uh, I recently started doing CrossFit. Um, re recently, like, as you can tell, some of you are like, yeah, I can tell. Like, yeah. like you haven't been going that much, have you? No, nope, I've been working on this. So um, <laughs> when I started getting ready for CrossFit, you know, Pastor Aaron and, and Ryan were just kind of like, hey, listen, you know, you, you want to you kind of get ready and prepared for it. Like, All right, cool, done, no problem. I think in their mind, they're thinking, like, drink a gallon of water, do some light stretching, you know, like, maybe go for a jog. You know, you haven't left the couch in a few days. Like, go do some things. My version of preparation was, hey, listen, we're going to go to the North Tampa outlets, baby. We're going to go up to that Reebok store, and I'm going to buy $300 worth of outfits for the CrossFit gym. That was my version of, is it outfits or is it costume? It's not costume. Out outfits. I was going to buy some outfits. Here was, here was my philosophy. Listen, if you look good, you will perform good. Am I the, do I, some of you guys are at LA Fitness like, oh yeah, that's the, that's the dream. That's exactly what it was. And so then I was like, all right, you know what? I, I got to buy some supplements. You know, you can't do CrossFit and not do some supplements, right? But I didn't get like supplements that like I would probably need, you know, <laughs> like some, like a multivitamin or something like <laughs> No, 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 no. I go in, like, to these, like, I follow on Instagram, like, these top elite beast mode CrossFit people and start getting, like, these supplements that these guys take. And it was, like, pre-workout and post-workout. So I'm going in there going, all right, cool. I'm got, I got my outfit. I got my pre-workout. I didn't know that, like, it, you just don't take pre-workout in in CrossFit because it gets your heart rate up. And it's and, like, CrossFit's already, like, a high-intensity cardio thing. 
So for me, I took that thing. I'm there first day. I'm looking good. My heart rate's going. I start in the middle of the exercise and literally have to go to the bathroom and throw my guts up. <laughs> Did not make it. I wasn't prepared. I wasn't prepared. I think we're seeing today in 2020 people who were not prepared for when the hard times were going to come. If we were to be honest, I think some of us in here are going, man, my faith is really shaken in the season. But maybe it's because you weren't preparing your faith for hard times and the times that were good. For some of our marriages, they're all over the place and the, and the relationship is rocky and it's because you weren't investing into it long before. And now when things are starting to get hard times, you're going, I don't know if we're going to last. We've got to get better at preparing. I believe there's actually, and you can write this in your notes, there's purpose in preparation. There's purpose in preparation. Benjamin Franklin says this, failing to prepare is preparing to fail. We don't see this in the life of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, though. Let me show you what they do. And actually, in Daniel chapter 1, it says this in verse 4. This is, then the king, so this is Nebuchadnezzar, ordered his chief of his court officials to bring the king's service some of the Israelites from the royal family and nobility. Young men without any physical defect, handsome, showing aptitude for every kind of learning, well-informed, quick to understand, and qualified, and to serve in the king's place. These are the type of guys Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Long before the furnace, they were guys prepared, qualified to be used by God. And in the midst of this season, Radiant and those who are watching online, I would encourage you, it's not too late. Some of you guys are experiencing this heat. Some of you guys are experiencing the, the really the intensity of this season. It's not too late. But there are a couple of things that we're going to have to do. I think there's a couple of things. The first thing is, man, I think oftentimes some of the things that keeps us away from preparation is actually, and you can write it in your notes this, this, like this, we are too busy comparing that we're actually not preparing. Wow. We're too busy comparing that we're actually not preparing. Let me, know, let me tell you what that looks like. I think oftentimes we are so busy looking at other people's lives, other people's families, other people's call, other people's ministry, other people's whatever you put in there. And we're trying to be like them and not focusing on being who God has called us to be. We've got to be prepared. I wrote it in your notes this way. You can, we got to stop striving and start learning how to thrive in this season. We've got to stop striving to get to the next season. And we've got to learn how to start thriving in this one. I, I wrote it in your notes this way. If the enemy can't destroy you, I believe he will try to distract you. Man, if we're going to make it through this season, we have got to be prepared. We've got to focus up. We've got to make sure that we get everything in check. Make sure our relationship with God is in check. Make sure our family is in check. The grass isn't greener on the other side. It's green where you water it. Yeah. Yeah. Let's wake up and let's get prepared to be all that God's called us to be. Because honestly, when the times get tough, here's what's not going to happen. It's not going to work out for us to be the second rate person that, that we've been comparing ourselves to. We've got to be the first rate person that God has called us to be. This is our time. Let's prepare. The second thing that we have to do, and you can write it in your, this, your notes this way, is we've got to have proximity. We've got to have preparation, but we've also got to have proximity. You can write it in your notes this way. There's actually protection in proximity. There's protection in proximity. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego didn't give up because they had each other. I wonder what would have happened. Like, you just know Abednego was that guy. You know what I'm talking about? Like that one guy that's like, furnace? Did he just say furnace? <laughs> so we're not going to bow. Okay, cool, cool, cool. We're not going to bow. All right, yeah, cool. Shadrach, Meshach, like, bro, what's your problem, dude? Like, come on, we're not going to bow. Yeah, yeah, we're not going to bow. Okay, cool. There's protection in proximity. Yeah. I wonder what would have happened if just Abednego had been by himself. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I wonder what would have happened. But there's like a boldness whenever it says, we, King Nebuchadnezzar, will not bow. Wow. And I wonder what would happen if the people of God in this season, like never before, were to gather together in unity and say, you know what? We are going to be in proximity with each other. We're going to circle each other. We're going to stand firm together in the midst of the season. I'm not going to let you fall. I got you. I got you. 
I wrote in your notes, it's not in your notes on this one, but there's, there's, there's freedom in proximity. James 5, therefore confess your sins one to another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power in its working. There's presence in proximity. Matthew 18, 19 through 20. Again, I say to you, if two of you agree on anything, they ask it will be done by my Father in heaven. For where there are two or three are gathered in my name, there I am among you. There's proximity. There's presence in proximity. I wrote in your notes this way, how am I surrounded? Who are you surrounding yourself with? A.W. Tozer writes it like this, you are the company you keep. 1 Corinthians 15, says, do not be misled. Bad company corrupts good morals. Are you frustrated in this season? Are you, are you, not, are you struggling in this season? Who are the people that you've surrounded yourself with? I love that old saying of, of, show me your friends, and I'll show you your future. It's so stinking true. Who are the people that you're surrounding yourself with? Are you surrounding yourself with people that, and here's a great way to tell, actually. Are, there peop, are the people that you're surrounding yourself with pushing you towards Christ or pulling you away from him? Are the people that you're surrounding yourself with pushing you to who God has called you to be? Or when they hear the dreams and the call and the plan that's on your life, they, they think of negative things to say. They discourage you. Oh, well, don't get your hopes up. Oh, well, you're sure that's what you're called to do? Man, I think like never before we have got to stick together. We've got to be surrounded by people of faith, people that are going to hold us up, going to say, hey, listen, no matter what happens, we're going to stand firm believing that God can move. God has a plan for your life. We have got to stay surrounded. The second thing that we have to do is, I wrote it in your notes this way is, who am I surrounding? Who am I surrounding? Man, I think if we were to be honest, we're starting to see in this season who the real friends are and who they're not. My question to you tonight is, which one are you to others? We got to be surrounded, but man, as people of God, we are called to do the surrounding. And I think there's this weird, like, thing happening right now, and especially in culture where, like, man, like, never before the church needs to stand up for what's right and surround other people. And listen, just because we may not look the same or have the same skin color, our job is to stand up and be the church for those who are, who are in pain, for those who are hurting. We're going to stand with our black brothers and sisters in the midst of this season and go, we are with you. Here at Radiant Church, we celebrate diversity. I don't understand. I think we're afraid of the fire. I think we're afraid of the fire. We've got to stand up for what's, ju- for what's right. We've got to stand up for justice. Yes. Stand up for those who are hurting and broken. Man, maybe it's for you who heard Pastor Aaron say this tonight. Maybe for you, you can surround others by leading a group. Lead a group. You got a house. You got a, now it's even easier. You, you got a computer and a, or a cell phone and you can download Zoom like Name of the Father, and Son, and Holy Spirit. Lead a group. Like, lead a group. Be there for other people. How are you surrounding others? What kind of friend are you? When standing in front of the furnace, are you, and it's getting hot, are you the person that's pushing other people towards their call or saying, hey, listen, you know what? It's getting hot in here for me, too. Let's, let's, let's leave. That's good. We have to stay surrounded. And we have to stay surrounding. The third thing and the last thing and the team can come up is, if we're going to make this thing happen, if we're going to stand firm in our faith, we have to have preparation, we have to have proximity, but man, we've also got to have perspective. We've got to have perspective. Winston Churchill writes this, success consists of going from failure to failure without loss of enthusiasm. You can write it in your notes this way, I believe there's power in perspective. There's power in perspective. James 1 writes this, Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that, he, that through the testing of your faith, it produces perseverance. Perspective. How do we keep perspective? Well, in this season, here's a couple of examples of how do you keep perspective. Okay, we've got masks. Man, I have to wear a mask right now. I have to go into Publix with a mask on. Do you know what that feels like to walk around Publix 
with a mask on. This is ridiculous. This is stupid. So I've heard this before. Some of these, this doesn't even work. This is not even a real thing. Versus what perspective comes in and goes, hey, listen, I get to wear a mask on. And then when I see that guy that I really don't want to talk to right now, I can keep walking on by and he won't even see me. Come on, don't act like, I see you guys in the back there. Don't act like you haven't done that. Come on, online, I know that some of you guys are out there. Do that. Hey, is that? Nope, mm -mm. nope, that's not, uh-uh. Perspective. Perspective, it's like, oh, sports are back again. The stadium has to be empty. Versus like, perspective. Sports are back again. The stadium has to be empty. The Rays are going like, yeah, we've been preparing for that. That's awesome. Like, so business as usual, right? Okay, cool. Good, good, good. Awesome. Perspective. You know what I think one of the number one in, uh, tactics of the enemy is to shift our perspective? Yeah. It's actually to re-identify who we are. Wow. To put a false identity on who we are. Yeah. It, it, help, it, it, it distracts us from who God has called us to be. Yeah. Do you, did anybody know the background of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego? That actually, for some of you that may not know that, that actually wasn't their real names. What their real names were is like Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. Hananiah actually means the Lord has been gracious. But look what the enemy does. Look what the king of Babylon does first thing, is rename them something that they weren't named before. Hananiah, the Lord has been gracious, went to Shadrach. I am very fearful. Mishael means who is what God is. And the enemy comes in and goes, nah, you're Meshach. I am of no account. I am of no worth. What about Azariah? Azariah means the Lord has helped. The enemy comes in and renames him to Abednego. Servant of the shining one, meaning servant of a false god. And I wonder tonight in the midst of the season, what have we allowed the enemy to rename us? What have we allowed the enemy to rename us? I wonder for some of us if that means unworthy, worthless, depressed, insecure. Oh, you'll never find a guy. You're not worthy. Man, am I here to encourage somebody tonight to say, hey, listen, just because that is what you think that you are identified as, let me just remind you for a second who you are. You see, I think Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, the reason they never lost perspective is because they actually remembered, and some scholars say this, that they were actually descendants of the king of Hezekiah, the king of Israel, that these are who these guys were. They knew exactly who they were. They knew that they were not Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They knew their names that they stood by. And I think oftentimes we forget who we are. And let me remind you tonight who you are. You are a son and a daughter of the one true king. You are the son and the daughter. You are called. You are set apart. You are more than a conqueror through Christ Jesus. God has a plan for you. It's not over. It's not over. We've got to keep perspective. And you can write it in your notes this way. I think this is what the biggest thing was. Is I know who I am because I know whose I am. I know who I am because I know whose I am. Meshach, Shadrach, and Abednego never forgot who they were, but they also never forgot who they served. They never forgot who they were. They never forgot also who they served. And man, tonight we have got to get our perspective back on Jesus. We have got to get our perspective off of the circumstance, off of the fire, off of 2020, off of COVID-19, and onto the goodness of our God. He is worthy. He is worthy. Let me tell you who we serve. We serve the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the God that loved us enough to send his son Jesus to die on a cross for our sins, who now is seated at the right hand of God, interceding on your behalf daily. He has poured out his spirit, and now the same spirit that raised Jesus from the dead lives inside of me, and it lives inside of you. That's the God we serve. 
We've got to keep perspective. We've got to keep perspective. The story goes on to say, actually, here, I'm running out of time. The story goes on that King Nebuchadnezzar, they don't bow, right? They had preparation, they had proximity, they had perspective, they don't bow. And the King Nebuchadnezzar throws him to the fire. And it was actually in the fire that they were closest to God. Wow. Read what it says. In Daniel chapter 3, it talks about how in the fire, they throw him in there, and King Nebuchadnezzar goes, hey, hey, did we throw in three guys into that thing? There's a fourth one in the fire there with them, and it looks like he's the son of a god. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, come out of that fire. We are going to worship your God. We are going to give glory to your God. And tonight I came here to encourage you in the midst of this pain, in the midst of this season, in the midst of this circumstance, those who are watching online, I think I'm speaking to somebody tonight. It says in Psalms that he is near to the brokenhearted, meaning that in the midst of your pain tonight, He's actually closer to you than he has ever been in your life. In the midst of the fire, he's actually the closest. Don't give up. Don't give up. I've seen you move. You move the mountains, and I believe you'll do it again. They had all three of those things, preparation, perspective, proximity. But there was a one more active ingredient that they had in there, and that was called faith. And I think if we were to be honest tonight, some of us are a little bit struggling with this thing. Our faith has been wounded. Our faith has been beaten up. The fire is getting hotter and we're going, man, I don't know. I don't know. It's just not what I thought it was going to be. Look at this. It says, if we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to do, deliver us from it. And he will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not. That's faith. And I want to encourage you, and I do believe the best is yet to come. I do believe he'll move the mountains. But can I encourage you that the best that we're looking for is him? The best is yet to come. It's not our dreams, it's his dreams. The best for me isn't some job, isn't some spouse, isn't some, some children. Those are, all, those are all things that are great. But the best that's yet to come is him. That's what this is all about. This is what this is. Everything is here. This is why we're here. Our life is nothing but a vapor in eternity. He's what we should be after. And when we get that perspective, when he's our goal, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what happens. It doesn't matter what circumstance we find ourselves in because he's always with us. I love this scripture in Philippians 1, 20 through 21. It says, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me, to live is Christ and to die is gain. Let me kind of paraphrase that for you. For me to live is I get to bring glory to Christ. And for me to die, I get to be with him. That's what this thing is about. Life, relationship with Jesus. Be encouraged, and I believe God can do exceedingly and abundantly everything. He's faithful to his word. But even if, he is still worth it. I'm, I'm, I'm talking to somebody in here tonight who's, who's struggling with this. I love what Jesus says in John chapter 16. It says, I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. In this world, you will have trouble. He he doesn't lie. He's, he's pretty straight up and honest. Hey, you're going to have hard times. We're not guaranteed anything in this life. But take heart, for I have overcome the world. Who is your faith in tonight? Who is your faith in tonight? I like to take, take a moment. I feel like I'm speaking to somebody, and you'd go, you know what, David? I, truthfully, if I were to be honest, I don't have peace. I really don't. I don't. I'm in the midst of this fire, I'm in the midst of this circumstance, and I've lost my perspective, I've, I've lost my proximity. I don't have this faith that you're talking about because I don't serve the God that you are speaking of. I'd like to take a moment, if we could, just to bow our heads and close our eyes. If 
that's you tonight and you go, David, you know what? I want this peace. I want to serve this God that can move the mountains. I want to be in the midst of the fire. I want to stand strong. If that's you tonight and you want to dedicate your life to Jesus, I want to give you an opportunity. And all I'm going to ask is that you simply just kind of raise your hand on the count of three and just say a prayer with me. That's all you have to do is just raise your hand, put it down. And that, that's that even if type of faith. That's that step of faith going, you know what? I put my trust in him. If that's you tonight and you want that relationship with Jesus, I'm going to give you an opportunity on the count of three. One, two, three. Raise your hand tonight. And one of that's you. It's awesome. I see your hand. Yeah, I see it. For those that are online, make sure you comment on there online. That's you. That's awesome. Yeah, you can put your hand down. Thank you. Pray this prayer with me tonight. Say, dear Jesus, I give you my life. I give you my everything. Lord, I surrender to you tonight. I believe in my heart and I confess with my mouth that you are Lord. Lord, I surrender everything to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Come on, can we give it up for those who just made that amazing life-changing decision? Man, it's such a big deal that you did that. For those that did that online, welcome to the family of God. Now there's another group of people in here that I want to talk to tonight before we get out of here and go home. That's a group of people that are in here tonight going, man, David, you've been talking to me in the midst of this 2020 season. I've, I've not been prepared. I, I've, I've lost my proximity. I'm not surrounded by the best people and I'm definitely not surrounding others. And if I was to be honest, I've lost my perspective. It's okay. It's okay. We all have. God is faithful to meet us wherever we're at. And so tonight in this moment of worship, I want us to stand together. I want us to have a moment where we can in this time have a second to fix our proximity. I think this is what's so awesome about worship is worship comes in and helps refocus our proximity. It comes in and helps us refocus on Jesus. And as we've been, as I've been preparing for this song, or sorry, for this sermon, there's been a song that's really just kind of, I've just, just been stirring in my spirit. And I kind of want to, I want us to sing this together. And I'm going to teach you guys. It goes like, you are my champion Giants fall when you stand undefeated In the heavenly place Come on I am who you say I am You crown me with confidence I am seated In the heavenly place undefeated go back into that just a moment but tonight I want to encourage you that is the God that we serve he is our champion he is moving you are who he says that you are so why don't we one time tonight begin to lift our voices begin to lift our hearts begin to lift our perspective tonight come on we sing you are my Do you believe that? Jesus. 
Jesus has given me. And when I 